in three, two, one. Hello, my pickle peeps. How are you doing today? Welcome to day two of learning how to create, no, how to create your own stellar branded lookbook. That sells. We should add in there that sells. <laughs> that part's important, right? We don't do things that don't sell or we try our very best not to do things that don't sell. But anyway, welcome to day two. So I hope that after yesterday, you're now feeling a little bit familiar, a little bit comfortable with Canva. And if you've already been on Canva for a while, then maybe, I don't know, maybe I showed you something you didn't know. Oh no, <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. And I'd like to get started today. Yeah. Today's task is going to be a nice, super quickie one, all right? So no 17-minute videos here. We should be done in 10. <laughs> Today, we're going to actually start the creation process for our book. And it's going to start probably not where you would think. You might think that you start with, like, the cover or you start with your products or you start with a story or any of that aspect and those are all fantastic but we're going to start with like the very very basic foundation which is creating a page template so we're going to set this up to be branded beautiful cohesive and with that let's get started to the computer okay my pickle peeps let's get started here we are back in canva we are on our flyer that we started yesterday. We didn't actually start anything in our flyer, we just opened up the flyer. So what we're gonna do today is create a header and a footer on our page, and we're gonna duplicate that and make all the pages that we need in our book. So let's start. I'm gonna come over here into Elements, and I'm gonna start by putting the footer on here, and I'm gonna grab myself a box, I'm gonna drag it out to be the full width here, and shrink down and we can put it in there now you see when i move stuff around all these purple guidelines come up those are awesome and another reason that i so love canva would be these guidelines Alrighty, so there's that and to change the color of it you just click on the box and you see up here we have our color swatch in the top corner and i'm going to go ahead and make this one the dark gray for now. I might go in and change that later, but for right now, we're going to do the dark gray. Next up, I'm going to put some text on here. So if you are doing this to keep as a digital catalog or a digital lookbook, then you can have clickable links in your PDF. How awesome is that, right? I'm going to put here shop the pumpkin spice and Poe collection at metalsandpieces.com. Metals and Pieces is my business. And I'll come back in and change this. All right, and now I'm gonna change the font to one of my branded fonts because that's obviously not one of them. So I'm just gonna click on the box. So the whole box is highlighted, there's no cursor inside. And I can come up here to the fonts and I can put in my font that I use for like my regular text is Open Sans Condensed. Now, I do want to point out here to you guys, there's two types of fonts, basically. There's serif and sans serif. And when we talk about a readable font, it depends. <laughs> we'll start with a serif font. A serif font would be like my Eemfell here. I have no idea if I'm saying that right or not. But you see all the little dashes and extra flares on the bottoms and the tops of the letters? That's a serif font. Versus a sans serif, like Open Sans Condensed here, where you see the letters are smooth, they're upright, and they are very clean. Now, you'll notice with serif fonts, one of the most recognizable ones, and will probably bring to you back the horrors of high school, would be Times New Roman. Why is it so popular? Because it's very easy to read. Our eyes really like those serif fonts, especially on paper. But you'll notice if you do a lot of browsing on the internet, a lot of those fonts, even down to the default Google font, Arial, is a sans serif font. So it's just something to keep in mind as you are putting your stuff together and you're laying out your pages, which kind of font you want to use where. Now, I am in particular using the Open Sans Condensed in this section because it is a skinnier font than the Eemfell, and the spacing is going to work better for what I need it to do here. I'm going to start here. Another thing that I really love about Canva 
is how they do text boxes. You can start typing and it will just continue to expand and expand and expand that text box. You don't ever like run out of room on the text box. You might run out of room on your document, on your image, but you're never going to run out of room in the text box itself. And then you can see there's two ways to change the font size. The first one being up here, we can see right now it's at 31.5 for font size. Um, I could change it here. I could make it, let's put it at 72. Ta-da! Yeah, that's not quite what we'd be doing. But you see what I mean about how it resized or it restructured our line so it all fits in the text box? Really cool. So instead of controlling it here, the other way you can control the font size is just by grabbing a corner and dragging it down. That's a little bit smaller than I want. And then to put it all on one line, I'm just gonna widen out my text box until it all fits on one line. Ta-da! I can make it a little bit bigger than that. Okay. I'm going to bring this down onto my box in the bottom and I'm going to move it around until I get that purple line that says it is centered. Perfect. Now I'm going to change my font color because black on gray does not work, <laughs> especially black on dark gray. And I'm going to put this at white. I could put it at my branded blue. Uh, this is a branding opportunity, but I just want the simplicity. I don't really want this to be in your face. Shut now! Blah, 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 blah. I want them to be entranced by the image on the rest of the page. Now, the last thing I want to do here is, remember I said when you're doing these digitally, you can have clickable links? So I want to take this metalsandpieces.com and I want to make that a hyperlink. So how we do that is come up here on our last button here next to effects, we have the more, and you can see there, we can lock stuff, but we can link it. So I'm going to put this to metalsandpieces.com, apply, and now it is linked. You can see it's got the underline on there showing that it's a clickable link. So you could just put straight up shop and your company name. That's fine. I am doing this as a fall themed catalog or lookbook here. I use the words interchangeably. I know they're not really interchangeable. A catalog is going to give like specific product information. A lookbook is more of a mood and an idea and a fancy. Next up, I'm going to do my page numbers. And this is where you can really have fun with branding. Now, typically, I would put something like a shield up here because a shield is very important to my specific branding. It is my most common shape, but you could use a circle, you could use a square, you could use a triangle. There's all these different shapes here. Look, um, hexagon. You could do something with a border or a frame, any of that. Feel free, go wild. Or you can do something even crazier. So this collection is Pumpkin Spice and Poe, and I've decided I want my top corner, my page numbers to be in a raven. So I can search up here, Raven. And remember, if you are using this, the free version, on anything that you search, you would go ahead, hit these three dots and make sure that you are selected on free. I have the pro version, so I'm not gonna bother with that right now. But I'm just gonna do Raven. And I'm gonna pull up, I like this one right here. So I'm just gonna click on that and that'll bring it right into the page. You can click and drag something or you can just click it and that'll do it. And just get rid of those two. And I'm going to shrink them down. You don't have to hold the shift key or any of that funky stuff in Canva, which I really like. If you are dragging a corner, it's going to resize the whole thing and keep the proper dimensions. Make it a little bit smaller. Nice. I'm going to bring this up in the corner. Ta-da! Okay. And now, of course, I need an actual page number. So we're going to go back to the text field. I'm going to add a heading. I'm going to change my font. I'm again going to go with Open Sans Condensed simply because I don't like how the numbers look in Emfell. It's the only thing I don't like about that font would be their numbers because the placement and sizing is just weird. So I'm going to change that over and I'm going to make it one. This is going to be page one. And drag it over here and make it a little bit bigger. And we're going to change the color so we can read it. Again, you could absolutely put your brand and color on here. Black and white are some of my branded colors, so I'm not as worried about the black and white. 
and I'm going to get plenty of blue on the pages once we start putting graphics on them. All right, I still want that one to be just a little bit higher. If you're having trouble getting controls with the mouse, you can always go to your arrow keys for more precise controls. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, this is set as page one of my book. Perfect. I know I'm going to want about 10 pages to my book by the time we are done, probably focusing on one or two products per page depending on the sets. So I'll have that, I'll have a cover page, and I'll have like an end cap page or a thank you page. So what we can do now is just duplicate this. And if you look right above your page, you have these three symbols here. The first one is to add notes. I've never used that, so I can't help you with that. The second is to duplicate the page, and the third is to add a new page. So duplicating will obviously make a copy with everything that we have saved here, and add a new would just be a blank page. So we're gonna go ahead and duplicate. Great, now we're gonna go in, and I'm gonna double click on my one here, and I'm gonna change it out to a two. That's, that's page two, and it'll even tell us page two. And now you'll see again, we have add notes, we have duplicate, we can trash a page, delete it if you don't like it, you can add a plain page, and you can control going up and going down, along with just general scrolling, you can do that too. So there's page two, and we're gonna duplicate and do a page three. Ta-da! And duplicate four. I'm just gonna do five for right now. I know that eventually I want this book to be about 10, 10 to 12 pages, but right now I'm just gonna do five because you get the picture. You can, I hope you understand how to do this right here. Now you can see we have our pages five, four, three, two, one, all nice and done, all beautifully branded. We now have the foundation to build our the rest of our lookbook. Next we can add in templates and graphics and text but all of our pages have that foundational set there. The last thing you want to do, if you want to, is come up to the top and name it. So I might put here like fall lookbook template. And you can save this as a straight template if you want. If you're making one, say you're doing a signature collection lookbook and you know this is a process you're going to repeat and repeat and repeat then I would recommend making a template page and then instead of working on your template page you would go back to Canva itself go into all your designs and you can when you hover over an image your image will show up in here it's not right here because I didn't refresh the page yet but you can click on that and you can click to make a copy just hit those three dots and then make a copy and then have your original and work off of a copy to make your next your new book so how was that my pickly peeps pretty safe pretty easy right shouldn't be too complicated here you should be feeling pretty confident in at least this level of graphic skills so what did we do today we created branded pages and we got both our headers and our footers on there and we learned how to duplicate pages. I promise you this is gonna make the rest of the book really easy because you have your base level foundation going on. So before I get into tomorrow, if you enjoyed this content and you're having a good time, make sure you like this video. Every like helps encourage me to help make you guys more videos. If you have ideas on other tech things that you're going to want tips on in the future after we finish this lookbook series, also drop them in the comments below you know, while you're there, why not hit the subscribe button? We have six more days, or no, we have five more days after today, today's day two, we have five more days of lookbook training to make this stellar branded lookbook for your brand. Stellar branded for your brand. Eventually I won't repeat myself. <laughs> okay. But yeah, we have five more days, so you don't want to miss a single one. Hit that subscribe button, set your notifications that you want to hear from Melissa Pickle, and we will be all set. That said, I will see you tomorrow where we are going to learn how to create curated content libraries right here in Canva so you never have to worry about finding a graphic that matches your brand again. Till then, bye!